Welcome, Inflame is a Realme GT and today I'll show you a couple tweaks and tricks you can do on this device. So we're going to start off with the swipe down for notification panel. Uh, normally when you try to swipe down it gives you this uh, search. Personally I don't really care for it so I like to have a swipe down for notification so I don't have to reach all the way to the top to get it down. And to enable this all you need to do is go into the settings from here, navigate to home screen, lock screen and always on display find the swipe down on home screen and select notification and now once you swipe down as you can see you can pull down notification from like basically as low as you can swipe down so makes it really nice in my opinion i rather have this over the search then moving on to the next option it's going to be the simple dark mode now we can enable it through settings obviously but you can also quickly exit right here to the uh basically notification tray and once you tap on it and it turns on the dark mode uh, as you can see this will extend over well, the entire uh, Android along with default applications so calls messages browser uh, photos and so on will be supported by it now applications that are basically like additional applications uh, so as an example video uh, or prime videos Amazon Netflix stuff like that will probably not be supported. They usually have their own settings associated with it. With it, so you well, will need to either find those settings in there, or there's also a chance that some applications that you have downloaded from Play Store simply don't have any kind of dark mode. And if that is the case, you well, everything will be in dark mode apart from those applications. And additionally, if we go into the settings under the display and brightness, uh, we have the option for dark mode to have auto switch. Uh, when enable it, it will basically choose the actually switch it up there we go it will choose uh, light mode during the day and dark mode during the night now if you have it enabled it will be the reverse so during the day you will have dark mode during the night you will have light mode which might seem a little bit redundant at that point uh, that's personal opinion you might like it that way i prefer to have it light during day so it is easier to see uh well, during this direct sunlight and when you're outside now, anyway, moving on to the next option, it's going to be associated primarily with the screen. Uh, so, number one would be the screen color mode. Uh, and again, it's all on the display right here. So, if we scroll down, we have screen color mode, and by default, it is set to vivid. We have also gentle and brilliant. Uh, not really sure what brilliant is supposed to be because a vivid is already enhanced color display. Um, so, anyway, uh, brilliant or well, gentle. Gentle is uh, more, I guess, accurate color uh, rather than Vivid. Vivid is just uh, pump up the saturation of colors to make them look uh, as as colorful as you possibly can. And the Brilliant is basically almost the exact same as you can see by switching them on between. There is like almost, almost no difference between them. And ironically, it seems like Vivid is a little bit less saturated compared to the Brilliant. So it again doesn't really uh, makes sense and we do have additional images again we can see a little bit more saturation in this one and if we go with the well, gentle as you can see there is a uh, difference between the saturation between those so this is the more accurate one and last option as you can see now here you can you can see a bit more of a difference between those two but at the end of the day it is more up to what you like to see if you prefer the vivid uh then go right ahead and stick with it i personally prefer something a little bit less saturated a little bit more uh well toned down and this one will be for me the middle option now going back we have also a couple additional things uh, associated with uh, screen so we have video color enhancer and also video image sharpener so as you can see there is a little bit of an animation right here how it looks like now i don't think this will show much of a difference right here um, but you can test it out uh, it looks like this image is a little bit sharper than this one so it basically artificially sharpens it to make it look uh, a little bit more high quality than it actually is and video color enhancer just adds additional color to it makes the image look a little bit more lively 
Again, uh, this is something similar to uh, the color uh, aspect that we chose, so vivid, uh, gentle, and brilliant. Uh, it's kind of similar to this, but just done for videos itself. Uh, so if you want it, you can turn it on from here, and there you go. Okay, yeah, so moving on to a next option, it's going to be the screen refresh rate. And again, it's un under the display, although it's under the more option right here at the bottom. We have screen refresh rate, and then we have auto select, we have the standard, and we have high. Now, auto select basically determines it for you, so sometimes it will set it to 60, even though it might be probably beneficial to have it at 120. Uh, but in other cases, for instance, if you're looking at images or basically anything that is standing still like this page right here, it will drop the refresh rate to a lower one to preserve battery. Uh, well, when you're trying to scroll up and down like this, it will boost it up to 120. So scrolling through content looks a little bit more smooth and well, nice. Uh, but honestly, in here you can also copy it to a specific amount. So if you want to, for instance, have 60, you don't see much of a difference between 120 and 60. Uh, then go right ahead and change it to standard. Uh, if you prefer to have it always capped at 120, you can just select this. Uh, personally, I think I prefer to have it always capped. Uh, now, additionally, by setting it up at 60, you will gain a little bit more battery uh, rather than with 120. 120 hertz will drain it a little bit quicker. So there is a trade-off. You will have smoother content, uh, but also you will have less battery life. But to me, uh, the trade-off right here is fairly well, fairly worth it. When you're scrolling up and down to content and you just have pages moving, uh, with 120 it just looks super battery smooth. And can't really show this on camera because the camera is recording at 60 frames. So anything above it gets basically lost. But if you have been using this device already, uh, then you probably already see the difference between like the video or what you see on this video right here and for instance when you're scrolling up and down on your device everything just moves way nicer than it is on the video but anyway let's move to the last option uh, which is the gesture navigation and by default it comes disabled and you don't have anything about it during the setup so you can actually enable it by going into the convenience tools right over here and then navigation and simply select the swipe gestures from both sides. This removes your buttons from the bottom and substitute them for gestures. Now, it does give you an animation here how to use them. And just to quickly go over it, you can swipe from either side. As you can see, there's this arrow appearing to go back. So once I let go, it just moves the page back. Same goes from the other side. Then you can swipe up to go home and swipe up and hold to go to recent. Now, when it comes down to the swipe up gesture, it is a little bit more tricky for people that, has ne that have never used this. So if you're having problems with actually activating this gesture, what I can advise you to do is when you're trying to swipe up, normally you do have this tiny little bar in here. Let me just bring it up. There we go, I don't know why it didn't want to open, but you can barely see this tiny bar right here. And you're supposedly supposed to swipe up on it. Uh, but if you try to swipe up a little bit too high, you might basically activate the swipe up gesture like this. Or, so you're trying to go up and down on a page. So to combat this, what you want to do is start the swipe off of the screen from the bezel, the black area that doesn't light up. When you swipe up on it, uh, from, from that area onto the screen, you are basically guaranteed to get the gesture correctly. So. Anyway, this will conclude all the tweaks and tricks that I wanted to share. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.